Let's get into April. On the second, Withering Rooms hits Xbox Series and PS5. This is a 2.5D horror adventure set in a procedurally generated Victorian mansion, and it kind of looks like if Silent Hill was an arcade game. I mean, different from the Silent Hill arcade game they actually made. Did you know they made that? They made one. Look it up. On the fourth, there's Beat Slayer, which sounds like a Beat Saber clone, but it's in fact an isometric roguelite rhythm-based hack and slash about fighting robots. That's on PC. Also on PC, and also a roguelite, Pathfinder Gallowspire Survivors, which is set in the universe of the second most popular fantasy tabletop RPG that's been in early access since last year, but it's now officially a bona fide 100% real game, version 1.0. You get it, Pathfinder. Piss off, Scavlander. On everything, there's Freedom Planet 2, the cartoony pixel platformer, and on PC, PS5, and all the Xboxes, Turbo Golf Racing Fucking leaves early access. If you haven't solid. been keeping track, that does for golf what Rocket League did for soccer, which is to say, it makes you play it with little tiny cars. Like actual little tiny cars, we already not just golf this carts. Game. Wait. It is a long Rocket time League ago. did for soccer, which is to say, it makes you play it with little tiny cars. Like actual little tiny cars, not just golf carts. Was it early access that we played? I don't remember. On April uh, 5th, so Sons of Valhalla ago. comes to PC. This is a side-scrolling strategy with a healthy dose of base building and battling, and it's made its way onto a lot of people's wish lists, so this could very well become one of this month's biggest surprise hits. On April 9th, Children of the Sun comes to PC, and I guess you could describe this as a shooter since it's about a sniper on a revenge mission, but the twist is that you control the bullet, which makes it more like a puzzle game. So think like Sniper Elite meets Super Hot, kind of, but with a grimy comic book aesthetic. So also kind of like the movie Wanted, but not like Wanted the comic, because that was really different for the movie. Basically, you can bend the bullet around and make it go hit guys in the head. So keep this one in your crosshairs. On the 9th, the 5v5 MOBA-inspired hero shooter Gigantic gets a definitive Rampage edition, which is coming to the Playstations, Xboxes, and PC. On April 10th, Araban Shadow Legacy Stealth drops on PC. Not actually because we know about the release date in advance, but it is a stealth platformer, so you will literally do a lot of stealthy stuff to get the drop on people. Get it? Still in the 10th, everybody's favorite homebody dolphin is back for more indoor antics in House Flipper 2, which is now on new gen consoles. I'm kidding about the dolphin part. It's actually a game about renovation real estate. And yes, I basically made that same joke when it hit PC a while back, but you know what? I also slapped a fresh coat of paint on it, redid the bathroom fixtures, and I'm putting it back on the market. So here's hoping I get above asking. And finally on the 10th, PC players get yet another fantasy title. That's literally the title of the game. And as you can probably tell, this is an open world top-down RPG with wizards and dragons and so on. and based on the title, it is clearly not taking itself too seriously, which I appreciate. On April 11th, the Fallout Special Anthology comes to PC, which collects Fallout's 1, 2, Tactics, 3, New Vegas, 4, and 76, as well as all the expansions and DLC included with the Ultimate and Game of the Year editions, respectively. If you're paying close attention, the physical edition is packaged in the same mini new collector box as the initial Fallout Anthology that came out back in 2015, but this one includes the two Fallout games that have come out since then. Also on the 11th, Infection Free Zone enters early access on PC. Zombie games are a dime a dozen, but this top-down strategy game lets you pick any any real world location, buildings and all, and then use that area as your base camp where survivors can rebuild society. So it's a little bit like what? Plague Inc, but on a much more intimate scale. So theoretically, this is your chance to real test life? out all those zombie apocalypse plans where you hole up in your local shopping mall or big box store, or no. you know, where, where zombies invade your high school and bite your principal in the head. I'm not sure how one-to-one -one this is, but it's a really cool concept nonetheless. On April 16th, Obsidian's Honey, I Shrunk the Survival nah, Game Grounded opens up to a whole so. new audience when it comes to PS4, PS5, and Nintendo Switch. Version 1.4 will also be dropping across all platforms around then, which probably includes some bug fixes, as well as some new bugs, in the literal insect sense. If fighting big bugs and being grounded isn't your jam, you're in luck because that day also sees the release of Europa on PC, an exploration-based open-world game where you zip around on a jetpack, which looks nice and chill, and probably doesn't have any big spiders. Moon really Studios did some wonderful things for the Metro Metroidvania genre with the Ori games, and now they're aiming to do the same for isometric action RPGs in No Rest for the Wicked. The isometric camera angle might suggest this is taking some cues from Diablo, but it apparently plays a lot more like Dark Souls, so be prepared to roll with the punches or away from them and probably die a whole bunch. Either way, that hits early access on PC on the 18th. The co-op cyberpunk roguelite Arc Runner comes to all the consoles just shy of a year since it launched on PC, and there's also Umarangi Generation, which is according to the official description, quote, a first-person photography game in the shitty future, which looks a lot like Sludge Life. That's already on Switch and PC, but on the 18th, it's gonna be on PS4 and PS5, and a dedicated VR version is also coming to PSVR 2 and MetaQuest that very same day as well. On the 22nd, Dead Island 2 is coming to Steam after a year of Epic Games Store exclusivity, and really, for any Steam users who'd been waiting around 12 years for a proper sequel to 2011's Dead Island, what's one more year? Anyway, now you can hit zombies in the face with an electric shovel. Have fun out there. 
Speaking of long waits, on the 23rd, Ayudin Chronicle 100 Heroes finally drops, and if you haven't been keeping track, this is the Suikoden spiritual successor overseen by Yoshitaka Moriyama, who was behind the first two games in that series. Ayudin Chronicles blew the hell up on Kickstarter back in 2020, and was originally April slated looks for a really bad, release. Unfortunately, it takes a cool minute Not to make a lie. JRPG with 100 April unique playable characters, April looks very dry. So it got kicked down the road a couple times, but now it is finally... Is it always dry? I don't think so. Also that day is Tales of Kenzera Zao, which at face value is a Metroid but there's actually a lot going on here. It's directed by Abubakar Salam, who you may know as the voice of Bayek in Assassin's Creed Origins, and who also starred in HBO's Raised by Wolves. In addition to being influenced by Bantu folklore and Salam's own experiences with South African tribal groups while shooting Raised by Wolves, it's also inspired by his grief following the death of his father. The way he explains it, in a Metroidvania, you start out totally lost with nothing, but you gradually figure out where to go and get the tools to get you there, which is a neat metaphor for grief. And it's also really cool to see people channel tragedy in a creative way, and it's even cooler to get a glimpse of the human side of game development. Anyway, that's a new gen Switch and PC. If that's too heavy and you'd rather just eat pizza and stomp the Foot Clan, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade Wrath of the Mutants is out for everything. This is a port of the 2017 arcade game based on the 2012 cartoon, which was itself paying homage to the 1991 classic beat-em-up Turtles in Time, so it'll probably click for anybody who got hooked on Shredder's Revenge. Everybody has their favorite version Shredder's of the Turtles, Revenge. and it's easy to fault the latest reboot for not being as good as the one you grew up with, but I feel like with each new mutation, it also gets easier to appreciate just how simultaneously versatile and timeless these characters are as a whole. When that 2012 Turtles show debuted, I was turned off by the CG animation and never really gave it a fair shake and probably about how they messed up the Rat King's design. But since then, we've gotten the Michael Bay Turtles, Rise of the TMNT, and Mutant Mayhem, plus all sorts of crazy stuff in the comics. And even if not all of that stuff appeals to me, I'm just glad it exists. Like, there's still Turtles. That's great. Maybe I'm just getting sentimental in my old age. I like Turtles. But it warms my heart reading the comments on this game's trailer and seeing a younger generation of Turtles fans being nostalgic for a version of the Turtles that still somehow seems new to me because I'm old and so tired. Anyway, cowabunga, everybody. On April 25th, Saga Emerald Beyond hits the PlayStation Switch and PC, and that is the latest installment in one of Square Enix's myriad JRPG franchises. And that same day, another Crab's Treasure drops on everything but PS4. Despite the cartoony aesthetic, this is a Souls-like, so it'll presumably push back a fair amount. And hey, why not? Older gamers might have more patience, theoretically, but there's also nothing inherently M-rated about difficult combat, so this could very well be baby's first Soulsborne, and sh it's probably easier than The Little Mermaid for NES. On April 26th, Sandland hits PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. This is the open world vehicular action RPG based on the second or third most popular manga by the late and great Akira oh, Toriyama, creator already. of Dragon Ball. The Sandland manga anniversary of the PC, PS3, and Mac OS versions of the game, which gradually trickled out over the course of- Braid. This is a very hybrid game, I know, right? Anniversary edition, maybe that's something to check 2009, out. 2009, but the game debuted in the middle of 2008. But then again, it's a game about creatively manipulating time, so they could have just called this the 20th anniversary just to see if anybody was paying attention, but that would require Jonathan Blow to not take himself seriously for it's April 2024's biggest big huge thank you to based tactical roguelike deck builder Tendril, which is a grid-based tactical roguelike deck builder on right. PC. Well, April looks uh, very, very dry, very dry indeed, unfortunately, uh, very unfortunately. Uh, what was the super hot sniper game? I forgot what it's called, but we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out, yeah, the good bugs, Novaga, Noir, a Night Court, and Fazani, and Pro99 Mad, thank you ladies. Welcome back. All right, all right, all right. We're fucking good here. We're fucking good with Lost Links. 